Okay, now we are going to build the final image in our stack, which is the web server image. And as we mentioned at the start of this section, we are going to use Nginx for this. So let's go to the web directory and let's start by, as usual, creating the Docker file. Okay. Now here we are, the Docker file of our Nginx is going to contain the following. As usual, from, we're going to use the image on which we are going to base our image. It's going to be the engine X and of course you're going to run our usual apt get update apt get dist upgrade dash y apt get clean apt get auto clean okay but in this particular image we are going to add another command we are going to install the open SSL package we are going to need it as we are going to see later in this project because we are going to use it to create the password that we are going to use to protect some parts of our web application. So OpenSSL is a needed package in this image so we are going to use apt-get to install it. It's apt-get install OpenSSL. Okay. And then as usual we can define an environment variable that is going to define our web path. We're going to call it www underscore path. It's going to be in slash usr slash share slash www slash html and you can use whatever path you desire as long as this path exists and in order to ensure that it does we will need to create it so mkdir dash p dollar sign www underscore path and change ownership nginx nginx for the user and the group for www underscore path and if you are not familiar with uh, shell commands, if you, are, if you are new to Linux, this and sign means that we are, we are instructing the image to execute this command only if this command is successful. So if for some reason or another, the mkdir command did not complete successfully, the directory is not created for any reason, this command is not going to run. It's just a way of combining commands, one way of chaining commands together, but we need to ensure that all of them are completed successfully before going ahead. Now we are going to create the password for the .htpasswd file for our authentication. The .htpasswd file is a file that is used by Nginx to protect some parts of the website or the website as a whole. It contains users and passwords encrypted in some form and it is used for basic authentication. So I could have just created inv password for a password variable and I could have set it to something like this, pass. However, I need this to be configurable while building the image. I will need to give the user the chance to supply the password while he or she is building the image. So for this, I'm going to use another instruction, which is arg or arg. Arg is going to give you an argument and a default value for this argument, but this can be overridden while building the image. So how can we override this? Simply by adding dash dash build dash arc. Let's add this as a comment so that it does not show that red highlight. Dash dash build dash arc allows us to add command line variables or command line arguments to the build command. Like this password equals pass one, two, three, for example. So I can write the command, the whole command as follows, like docker build dash t, then give it this build argument then dot as usual i'm gonna leave it here for you just as a reference so that you always know why the why we use the arg instead of the inv okay next i'm going to run the following command to actually create the dot ht passwd file using a shell command i'm gonna explain it while i'm running it printf as the name suggests it's gonna print a line so it's user and this is the user. Its name is user. I can I can add anything like Bob, for example. Okay, and then I'm I'm gonna have to create the password. This can be done by using this notation dollar sign followed by a pair of rounded brackets. Then open SSL, the command that we have installed at the top of this file, pass wd dash one, then the password. So the password is going to be read either from this default value or from 
this argument if we passed one. If we did not pass anything, if we, if we did not pass build arg to the build command, it's going to take the default, which is pass. If we did, it's going to take whatever was supplied in the build command. Okay, then we need to add backslash n for new line. And we are going to add this to the www underscore path in a file that is called dot ht pass wd. Now let's break this line and see what it exactly does. So printf, as we said, is going to print a line. This line is going to be amended by using this double greater than sign. This means amend or append at the end of the file. And this is the file that we are going to create if, if, it, if it does not already exist. If it does exist, it will append to the end of it. It's called .ht pass wd file. Okay. And it's going to reside in the www underscore path, which is the slash usr slash share slash www slash html. Okay. So what is going to be added to this file is this line, Bob as a user, followed by the hashed password of Bob. In order to hash the password, we need to run this command, openssl pass wd dash one, and then the password itself. This is the clear text password. It's going to be read from the command line or from the argument default value, which is pass. Then we need to add a new line. So imagine that this password was just something like this, an encrypted password. It will be added to the end of this file. So why do we add the dollar sign and double brackets. This is because we need to execute the content that is between those brackets. Instead of just adding it literally, I need to ins I need to encrypt the password and add it here. So whatever comes inside those brackets is going to be substituted by what this command yields. In other words, the encrypted password. So the ht passwd file is going to contain something like this. I'm going to show it to you when we run the container out of this image. Okay. Now we need to start configuring nginx. We need to create the configuration file needed for running our web server. So the first thing we need to do is remove the default configuration. So we are going to run rm slash etc slash nginx slash conf.d. This is the default place where the configuration file of nginx exists. So we are going to delete default.conf file located in slash etc slash nginx slash conf.d. And we are going to replace it with our own version. We are going to copy whatever was inside edc nginx conf.d main.conf. And what I'm doing here is that I'm going to create a file system or a path that is similar to what is exactly on nginx. As we said, this is just by convention to give you an idea about where the file that you are creating will reside on the image. So I'm going to create after just just after I, I finish the Docker file, I'm going to create slash I'm going to create edc slash nginx slash conf.d and I'm going to place main.conf inside that path and then instruct docker to copy that file once I build the image to nginx slash edc slash nginx slash conf.d just like that. And finally, I need to copy the web files itself. I'm going to have to get them. Will be locate, they will be located in slash usr slash share slash www slash html to the corresponding directory on the image slash usr slash share slash www slash html. And that's it. That is our Docker file. And again, this is available for you in the resources that accompany this section. Now that we have finished creating our Docker file, let's add our configuration file and get our web files, the HTML files that are going to make up our blog. So let's go to our terminal. And while, in, while we are inside the web directory, I'm going to create usr share www html. Going to also create edc nginx conf.d. And then I'm going to go to the web directory and just paste the web files. I have already downloaded and modified those files from a repository that I found on GitHub. I made some modifications to the website so that it can work with Node.js. So I have now pasted them. As you can see, we have some Angular views. We have some HTML files. We have some JavaScript files, CSS files. Can have a look at this when you download the resources files that accompany this section. Now let's go to create our configuration file. So let's go to EDC 
conf.d in GenX, conf.d, and let's create our main.conf file. Okay. The configuration of Nginx is very simple. Just create a server object inside it. We're gonna listen at port 80. We're gonna specify a server name, although this is not that important, but we can just specify any name. Let's say projects in docker local. It's not gonna be used anyway. And we're gonna specify the root of our files uh, or web files gonna be in slash usr slash share slash www slash html of course that's gonna be created when our image is built and the index of this web server is gonna be index.html don't forget to add a semicolon at the end of each statement on nginx failing to add so is going to give you a very hard to find error now we can define our locations. Each location in GenX can be defined using the location keyword. Every path can be defined by the location keyword. So the uh, first thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to deny downloading anything that starts with a dot just to prevent users from downloading the .ht passwd file. This is my first location. My second location is going to be our create.html file. This is the file or the page that is going to be used to create new blog posts. I'm going to instruct Nginx that this needs to be protected. So this is the message that is going to be displayed when somebody tries to access this web page without supplying the password or with supplying the wrong credentials. And this is the location of the file that contains the credentials, the .ht passwd file. It's gonna, it's located in slash usr slash share slash www slash html and dot ht pass ability. okay that is my second location my third location is going to be the api and this is where the reverse proxy functionality of nginx comes into play nginx by default is going to display anything that is inside slash usr slash share slash www slash html whether they were html files images javascript files css style sheets anything but as soon as the path starts to get the slash api here this means that we need this to pass to the backend application server. This needs to be passed to node.js so that it can connect to the database and retrieve the results and get it back to us or add whatever we pass in to it via a post request, for example, to the database. So we need to instruct Nginx to pass any request that has the slash API slash to the backend server. This can be done using this first try files URI or uri slash this means try first to find the url if it exists on uh, the web server if we do have slash api on the web server of course we don't but if we do just have a look maybe this is a static file and we need to serve it to the client instead of going back to the backend server if it doesn't go to a variable that is called backend this is where we are going to define our backend server location backend is going to be proxy pass to HTTP, this is just the IP address of the backend server, of Node.js server or of the Node.js container. It will be 172.17.0. Again, 1. And the port is 3000. This is the port that we have agreed. That is going to be our Node.js port. Okay, so now we have the configuration file. Let's have a look at it quickly. It's going to listen to port 80. It's going to have a server name that is projects in docker.local. The root of the web files is going to be slash usr slash share slash www slash html. The index file, which is the default file that is going to be served to the client. If no file was requested, just the directory is going to serve index.html by default. Then we are denying downloading or viewing any files that start with a dot. Of course, this is for the .ht passwd file, which contains the encrypted passwords of our files. We don't want this file to be visible to the clients then we are restricting access to a file that is called create.html this file is used to create posts so we need to restrict access to this file we are going to use the .ht passwd file that we will create using the image which contains the users and passwords hard-coded there then we are instructing nginx to pass any requests that has slash api to the backend server and the backend server is defined here which is the ip address of the node.js container Okay, now everything is in place. Let's go to our terminal, ensure that we are inside 
the root of our web directory. Okay, now let's clear the screen and run docker build dash t web and let's use our build arguments dash dash build dash org password is pass123 so the user is bob and the password is pass123 and this is going to be applied for any files in our current directory let's press enter and let it run okay now the image has been built if we now type docker image ls now we have six images three base images nginx mongo and node and three images that we have built on top of them db app and web our application now is ready to start creating containers and testing it that will be the starting topic of next lecture so until then take care